Hello everyone and welcome to the Kiki London YouTube channel. My name's Amanda and in today's video we're going to be doing some gel polish Nala with an autumn theme of course. One of the main things I wanted to focus on in this video was encapsulating glitter and working with chrome powders as I'd had a few comments on Instagram asking about that so I thought I would include it all in one video and create an autumn themed set. So I really hope you all enjoy it watching. Now one of the base colours in this set is going to be the gorgeous Olive U which is from the new Fall 2021 collection. If you haven't already checked out this collection then you definitely need to. It is full of eight beautiful colours. So this is the first coat of Olive U. As you can see it's very highly pigmented and it's a gorgeous kayaki green colour but it's on the bit more of a yellow side so I find it the most perfect green for autumn. Now that the first coat of colour has cured, I'm going to come in and apply the second coat of colour and I'm keeping this second coat super, super thin because it's a very highly pigmented colour and because we're going to be encapsulating some glitter on this nail, I want to keep all of the layers thin as possible. So I'm going to pop that second coat into Cure and I'm just going to show you guys the glitter that I'm using. So as you can see, it's a multi-cut glitter mix, but it hasn't got too many chunky pieces in there. And then I'm going to be using some chrome flakes as well. Now to apply these glitters, I'm going to be using the base coat just to basically moisten my gel polish brush or sorry, my nail art brush so that I can pick up those glitter pieces. Now the nail art brush I'm going to be using is the 01 detail brush because I only want to apply a small amount of glitter. I'm not going to be covering the entire nail. I'm just going to do like a trail down the center. So I'm going to start off by applying the chrome flakes. So as you see, I dipped my brush into the base coat. This just makes it tacky so that the chrome flakes are going to stick to my brush. They're then going to naturally stick to the tacky layer of the gel polish. And then I'm just taking a moment to smooth them all out. Now chrome flakes are very easy to encapsulate in gel polish because they are nice and flat. Glitter on the other hand can be a little bit tricky to encapsulate in gel polish. So one of the things you want to bear in mind is you don't want to be using a too chunky glitter mix. You want to make sure that you've got a glitter mix that hasn't got any large particles in it because the larger the pieces of glitter, the more that they are going to stick up. So this piece here that I've just popped down, that's probably the very largest size piece of glitter I would use in gel polish. And another thing is you want to make sure that all of those glitter pieces are lying as flat as possible. So you don't want too many overlapping and and you don't want too many sticking up because otherwise you're going to be able to still encapsulate them but it is going to feel rough and bumpy on the nail which some clients don't like. Now because I've applied all of those glitter pieces with the wet base coat I'm going to pop this in to cure for 30 seconds just to hold all of that in place so that we can encapsulate. Now basically with encapsulating you're going to do two layers of top coat. So the first layer is going to be a no wipe rubber top coat and this is because it's a slightly thicker top coat so it's naturally going to apply a more smoother thicker top compared to a regular top coat. So I'm applying this and I'm making sure to to really work it around all of those glitter pieces. And you can see it does already look fairly smooth. But I'm just wiping over it a couple of times like I would if I was working with a builder gel. Then I'm gonna hold it upside down just to help pull it all around those glitter pieces and help self-level it out. Now the no white rubber top coat does self-level beautifully anyway, but just holding it upside down helps when you've applied a thicker layer like we have done here. Now that that top coat has cured, I'm going to take my Kiki London 180 grit buffer and I'm going to use the 100 grit side of the buffer to begin with. This is the more harsher, coarser side of the buffer and I'm going to buff over the entire nail focusing on where that glitter is. So I don't want to apply too much pressure but I just want to make sure it's smoothing it out and as you can see here we've got a super smooth surface and all of that glitter is still fully encapsulated. Buffing the surface just helps make sure that any unevenness from the glitter has been smoothed out. I'm then going to wipe away the dust from buffing using an alcohol pad and now this now is ready to be top coated with your final layer of top coat which I'm going to be using further along in the video and that will be the classic no wipe top coat and this is my way of getting a super smooth encapsulated glitter nail.
So on to the next now, I'm going to be using ivory as my base. Again, this is another color from the fall 2021 collection. And I feel as though this one pairs beautifully with all of the colors in that collection. But I love how gorgeous it looks with olive U. Again, it's a very, very highly pigmented color. So I am still going to do two coats of color just so I get a nice even base because I want to make sure all of my now art is on a nice crisp base. So I'm applying that first coat of color nice and thin, popping it into cure for 30 seconds, and then I'm going to apply a thin second coat of color. When you are applying now art on top, if you can get away with only applying one coat of color, that's great. But if you do need two coats of color, which naturally a lot of gel polishes do require two coats of color, just keep your layers nice and thin because of what you're going to be applying on top. So that's our second coat applied and just look how gorgeous this color is. So I'm going to pop that in again to cure for 30 seconds. Now on this now, I'm going to be buffing in some chrome flakes. So to apply chrome flakes to gel polish, you need to apply them to a tack free top coat. So I'm using the no wipe top coat and by no wipe, it means that it has no tacky residue left after you've cured it. So I'm going to apply a thin layer of this to the entire nail. And then what we're going to do is to pop that in to cure for 30 seconds. Now I find whenever I'm applying chrome flakes, they apply a lot nicer if you apply them the soon as the top coat comes out of the lamp, because that way the top coat still feels a little bit warm and they seem to just adhere a lot easier. Now to apply those chrome flakes, I'm going to use my Kiki London silicone tool. So there's lots of different ways to apply chrome flakes. On the previous now, you see that I encapsulated them, which gives off one effect. And then on this way, I'm going to be burnishing them in to that top coat. So what I'm going to do is I just press them down to begin with. They are quite messy and depending on the chrome flakes you are using, some are easier to work with than others. But what I like to do is pick them up using the silicone tool, press them down onto the nail and then start burnishing them in. And this is why you need a tack free top coat because they don't burnish in if there's a sticky layer there. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create like a chrome fade with these. So I'm starting to blend these back so that the top part, the tip area basically of the nail looks nice and opaque with the chrome flakes. And then they sort of shatter and give out that faded effect as we get down towards the cuticle area of the nail. The more you burnish them in, the more full on coverage you get with them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dusty brush and just dust off the excess and really give them another burnish in. You'll then see that some of the chrome flakes have gone up onto that cream area. I'm going to just remove them from the ivory gel polish using an alcohol pad. So that part of the nail looks nice and crisp and clean. That's this nail then finished, ready to be top coated further along in the video. So moving on to the third now, I have already done my two coats of ivory. So I have my base ready ready to work on top of. And I'm then going to come in with the Kiki London foil gel because I wanted to add some foils to this nail. So I'm going to apply a thin coat of the foil gel and then pop that in to cure for 30 seconds. So we do have quite a lot going on in this nail. We've got glitters, chrome powders and foils, but it was a really, really fun set to do. And I loved how all of the different nail art and all of the different techniques worked together. Now for the foils, I'm going to be using a box of four, which is in the metallic colors. These are the ones I reach for quite a lot, to be honest. They are very versatile box of foils, and you could definitely include these in any set that you do. Now, I originally reached for the green foil, and this was the one I was going to use. But when I was looking at the green, I just felt as though it wouldn't have worked very well with the olive U because it was a completely different green. So I ended up going back and going for this more satin gold. And I'm so glad I did because it looked absolutely beautiful and worked so well with the set. So what I'm going to do is cut off a small piece of this and then once my foil gel has come out of the lamp, I'm just going to tap this on into the center of the nail. Now I want to adjust the foil on the center of the nail. So I'm being very careful not to touch it on the nail anywhere where I don't want it to be. The Kiki London foil gel is super, super tacky. So foils apply so easily to it, but I wanted just that shattered effect in the center. So that's why I was being super careful with how I applied my foil gel, my foil, sorry. 
Then I'm going to come in with the Kiki London No White Matte Top Coat and apply a thin layer of this to the nails. Now, my in my mind, for this nail, I wanted the foils and the ivory matte and my glossy and my decals sorry on the top glossy but what i ideally should have done is sealed everything in with the matte top coat first and then just gone over the decals with my glossy top coat so if you do want to do this sort of design yourself what i recommend with doing is apply your decals and then the matte top coat basically and then re-go over the decals with the glossy top coat you'll get what i mean as the video goes on so the water decals that i'm going to be using today are the autumn forest ones and what I've done is I've cut those water decals out as close to the image as possible. And then I started off by applying them with the stamper method, but this didn't work for me over the matte top coat. This is another reason why it would have been better to apply the water decals and then matte top coat. I just got a little bit carried away with myself and done that matte top coat a little bit too early on. But you'll see I pressed down and because there's no tackiness from the gel polish, they just didn't want to stick. So what I end up doing is I just get some tweezers and take that off and then apply it down on to the nail. And then what I do end up doing is just applying my water decals in the classic way by soaking them in some water and then setting them on to the nail with tweezers. I just faffed around a little bit and moved this water decal around into place. I wasn't 100% sure what I had in mind for the design, so I was just playing around with it until I was happy with how it's placed. Now, like I said, I wouldn't have done the matte top coat first if I'd have thought this through a little bit better just because these decals might not stay on if you was wearing this set as a client. So just to recap, what I would do is apply the ivory, then apply my foils, then apply my water decals, then the matte top coat. And then I'm gonna come over the water decals, like I said, with a glossy top coat because I want the water decals to be glossy. I haven't done anything like this before and sometimes you have to play around with designs and techniques to find out what works. I wanted those water decals to be glossy to give off that kind of wet leaf effect against the matte background and it did look amazing so next time I definitely will do my steps the right way around so that it could be a wearable design. But as you can see, I'm just placing those leaves down into place using the silicone tool to smooth out any creases or any bubbles just to make sure they are adhered nicely to the nail. And how gorgeous do they look over that foiled background. I really love the effect that it gives the leaves. It gives them a bit of a metallic look as well. So I'm then going to take the No Wipe Rubber Top Coat. I've popped some of this down on my palette and I'm just painting over the leaves. Now this is the where I realized that they're not going to be sealed in as good as if they had a whole entire top coat over them. So just to rectify that, what I did do was just go around the edges a little bit so that the top coat it wasn't just on top of the water decals it was on a small part of the nail as well just to make sure they're really sealed in but like I said I loved this effect with the glossy decals over the matte background please do let me know what you think in the comments below So I'm just taking my time, just going ever so slightly off the decal just so it does seal it in nicely you don't necessarily have to do this with the rubber top coat, you could do this with the no wipe top coat as well. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm just going to clean it up ever so slightly, remove any of that glossy top coat from areas that I don't want to look glossy. And then I will pop this into cure for 60 seconds and then that is actually this nail finished. It doesn't need an extra layer of top coat for this particular nail. On to my next nail, I have already done my two coats of Olive U, and then I'm gonna come in with the gorgeous Amber Flame. Now, Amber Flame is from the Kiki London Spring Bling Collection, but when this color was released, I knew it would be a gorgeous color for autumn. Just look at those copper, bronzy tones. When I was doing this set of nails, I knew I had to reach for this color. And I'm just gonna do a simple glitter fade with it because I thought it looked absolutely gorgeous over the Olive U. So I start off just by applying a small amount of that gel polish down at the cuticle area then i'm going to take my kiki london ombre brush and just 
feather that gel polish down the nail just to create a nice soft glitter fade. So I'm being really careful, really gentle when it comes to moving the glitter down the nail because you don't want to move too much down. You want to create that nice fade. Now you could do two coats of this if you wanted to. I decided to only do one because I did like the effect of the olive U underneath the amber flame. And then again, that's that now finished until we come to top coating. So moving on to the fifth and final nail in this set. I've already done my base of ivory. And then on that tacky layer, I'm tapping on some of those chrome flakes. Again, I've dampened my brush with a little bit of base coat just to pick those flakes up. And then I'm really pressing them down into the tacky layer of the ivory. Now I'm not burnishing them as much because like I said, that gives off a different effect. I'm just pressing them down just so they hold into place on that tacky top on that tacky surface, sorry. I can't get my words out today. I'm not sure what's going on. And look at the effect that gives off. I love the clash of bronze against the ivory base. Then again, I've cut out two more of those decals and this time I'm gonna apply them using the stamper method as this has definitely become my favorite way of applying water decals. So I've placed them face down on to my stamper head and then I'm dampening them with some water using the Kiki London Angled Nail Art Brush. And then once they're ready, I'm just gonna slide off the backing paper, starting with the first one, just working out where I want to place that on the nail. And then I'm pressing that down onto the tacky area of the ivory. And I'm gonna do the same again with this leaf. And I really love this now. I really loved that pop of bronze from the chrome flakes. And then you've got that nice crisp nude background and then the water decals on the top. I found it really hard in this set of nails to pick a favorite because I really did enjoy doing all of them. But do let me know in the comments below which one you liked the most. So this is our nails now that all the nail art and artwork have been done. So I'm gonna come in with the Kiki London No Wipe Top Coat today. I've been using the rubber top coat a lot in my videos because it is one of my favorite top coats, but I absolutely love the shine that the No Wipe Top Coat gives off. So because we've done a lot of heavy nail art and lots of glitters and things like that I decided to come in with this one now when you are top coating over chromes or glitters it is good to have a separate top coat just in case any transfer into your top coat bottle but what I'm doing is I'm just checking the brush to make sure I'm not picking up any of that chrome powder before I go in to the top coat bottle and as you can see, I'm just applying a thin layer of this to all of the nails apart from that middle finger because we done the top coat for that one in the middle of the video. Then once I have applied the top coat, I'm gonna pop these in secure and then I have left a clip showing you guys the finished result. Now, all of the products I have used today are linked in the description box below, along with the Kiki London Instagram and Facebook group. So do follow us on Instagram if you aren't already and join the Facebook group as well, as it's a great place to share your Kiki work and pick up any hints or tips. So guys, this is what the finished result looks like. I really hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, then please do give it a thumbs up or leave a comment below. And if you aren't already subscribed to the channel, I would absolutely absolutely love it if you hit that subscription button and I shall then see you in next Friday's video. Lots of love, take care, bye bye.